Well, hello, my friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, whatever time of day it is for you. Thank you so much for being here and welcome to the Sickening Truth Podcast. My name is Tisha Castillo and I am your host and I am thrilled that you are here. So what are we going to talk about? This entire podcast is about actually learning the truth about what's really causing us all to get sicker and fatter especially as we hit our mid thirties and on. So here's what I know to be true. Feeling exhausted and unhealthy after 35 should not be accepted as the norm. Getting older isn't supposed to hurt and we should not be content with a life filled with chronic symptoms and endless medications. My goal is to help individuals just like you overcome your chronic symptoms before they develop it into conditions like high blood pressure and diabetes by focusing on the root causes. We need to learn how to combat fatigue and weight gain, brain fog, chronic pain, and regain control over our health. It's time to address the root causes of your symptoms, halt the progression of chronic conditions, and dispel this insane myth that this is just what happens as you age. So again, thank you so much for being here today for the Sickening Truth Podcast. Let's get started. John Wick. Okay, probably not how you thought I'd start today's episode, but here we are. So I got to ask, do we have any John Wick fans out there? Me? Eh, Honestly, not too much. I mean, I don't dislike John Wick, but I definitely wouldn't consider myself a fan. My husband, on the other hand, big fan. Like the kind of fan who's been counting the days from when he heard that John Wick 4 was coming out to attending on opening day, actually the night before. And as soon as he got home from the three hour movie, which he went to see with another John Wick fan, he told me he'd watch it again right now if he could. Yeah, that kind of fan. After seeing that look in his eyes and how serious he was, I thought, okay, I'll go see it with him next week. Now, while some of you might thought, think, oh, that's so nice. That thought, that promise, that takes true commitment. You see, in our house, we don't see sequels unless we've seen the first movie and every other movie until that one. Now, I had never seen any of the John Wick movies. So that meant over the next eight days, I had to watch three. I mean, let me reframe that. I got to watch three. Yep. Three John Wick movies. Number one, number two, and number three, all before Saturday afternoon when I was going to sit through three hours of John Wick 4. So I'm guessing by now you're probably wondering what the heck the point is of this little tangent, right? Don't worry. I'm not releasing any spoilers here, so don't worry about that. But this is probably a good time to take hold of that wheel and bring it back to the point of the episode right about now, right? So let me tell you a story. See, in the middle of March, as my husband was scrolling through his phone, he gasped, paused, and told me that he just read that Lance Reddick, one of the main characters of John Wick, now you see the connection here, huh? Well, he had just passed away. Surprised, he then added that he was 60 and died of natural causes. 60 and natural causes? In my mind, that didn't make sense. I remember growing up and hearing about people who died of natural causes, like Like my great-grandpa, my nano, he was 93. One night he went to sleep and he didn't wake up. That to me was natural causes. And all I ever heard was how he had lived a good long life and it was just his time. So then fast forward to Lance Reddick in 60 and natural causes. And well, that just didn't sit right with me. A few weeks later, again, my husband, who, yes, is a news data information junkie, always reading, learning about anything and everything, read a headline from an article that he saw on Fox News. He read, Lance Reddick's cause of death disputed by family attorney, wholly inconsistent with his lifestyle. Now that headline grabbed my attention. Reddick's attorney had released a statement disputing his cause of death. His attorney wrote, Reddick's lifetime of personal fitness seems to contradict a statement from the coroner that Reddick died of heart disease. The attorney then added, the information appearing on the death certificate is wholly inconsistent with his lifestyle. The coroner's statement on the death certificate is not a result of an autopsy. No autopsy was performed on Lance. And to his attorney's knowledge, 
no medical examination of Lance during his entire lifetime ever indicated such conditions. Lance was the most physically fit person I've ever known, his attorney said. He exercised daily at his home gym, including extensive cardio work, and the availability of gym facilities was actually a contractual requirement for his work away from home. He ate as if a dietitian was monitoring his every meal. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up and my heart broke. He ate as if a dietitian was monitoring his every meal. And that, my friends, is most likely exactly why he died from heart disease. Now, before you start defending the dietetic world and wondering who am I to make such a statement, let me share a bit of something with you. What we are taught as nutritionists and dietitians is exactly what is supporting the worldwide epidemics that we have of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and so much more. You see, I went back to school to get my degree in nutrition and dietetics after I figured out how to heal myself and my family so that I would have the credentials and the additional knowledge to truly help people. See, I didn't want to just jump on YouTube and share my story. Heck no. You see, I was a people-pleasing, rule-following, perfectionist-seeking, high-performing woman. Spoiler alert, I'm not anymore, and I feel flipping fantastic. But I wanted to know the latest and the greatest so that I could confidently display my credentials, open a healthcare practice, and quite honestly, heal the world. So. I enrolled myself back in school, and after my first year was accepted into the nutrition and dietetics program, I was on my way to pure and utter frustration. Within a month of classes starting, I felt like I had been transported back 100 years learning things that I knew were just wrong. Follow the food pyramid, reach my plate, eat more fruit, vegetables, whole grains, avoid fat, don't eat animal protein. Oh, and be sure to work out every day. It's crap, folks. So yeah, if Reddick ate as if a dietitian was monitoring his every meal, then he, like I, followed the rules and passed away due to heart disease, or as the coroner record- recorded it, natural causes. The coroner said that Lance died suddenly due to natural causes, but he died of heart disease, right? So how in the world is heart disease a natural cause? Well, I did a little digging to find out what actually is a natural cause of death. I found two different definitions. One was from CNN Health, and the other was written from an ND from the Ohio State Medical Center. From CNN, death of natural causes means the person did not take their own life and they were not killed by somebody else or in an accident such as a car crash or drug overdose. From Ohio State, A natural death is one that occurs due to an internal factor that causes the body to shut down, such as cancer, heart disease, or diabetes. Wait, a natural death is one that occurs due to an internal factor that causes the body to shut down, such as cancer, heart disease, or diabetes? Since when would you consider a natural death to be cancer or heart disease? I mean, when you lose someone to cancer, and for those of you who have, I am so sorry, but do you say, oh yeah, my grandmother died of natural causes when in reality, breast cancer killed her? How sick has our world gotten that an internal factor taking a life is natural? In my book, chronic disease is not natural. Now let's go back to Reddick's attorney's statement that no medical examination of Lance during his lifetime lifetime ever indicated such conditions. Here's the scary news, folks. Heart disease doesn't always present with symptoms. And honestly, more often than not, you don't know about the condition until you suffer a heart attack or stroke. Your disease could be silent and you could experience no pain or any other signs or symptoms. Then all of a sudden, you suffer a heart attack or stroke that seems to come out of the blue. Sometimes you survive and other times your death certificate reads, died of natural causes, just like Lance Reddick. So Lance Reddick's cause of death is not uncommon. In fact, heart disease is actually the number one killer in adults. It causes one in five deaths and heart attacks occur every 40 seconds nationwide. 
20 million adults suffer from coronary artery disease, the most common type of heart disease, which is what Reddick had. And it caused 383,000 deaths in 2020 alone. According to the CDC, here's the kicker. 20% of those deaths occurred in individuals younger than 65, just like Lance Reddick. So what's the bottom line here, folks? We have all been fed a bunch of garbage over these last 70 years, literally and figuratively. What we've been taught to do to be healthy is quite simply a lie. And even worse, it's actually making us sicker and fatter, causing our bodies to shut down. Making matters worse for those of us lucky enough to experience symptoms. Yes, and I did just say lucky enough to experience symptoms because symptoms are actually how our bodies communicate with us. We're simply taught to treat our symptoms with medications or supplements that do nothing more than mask or silence them. The damage is still taking place inside our bodies. We're just muting the symptoms. Let's use this as an example. If we cover our ears when a baby cries, it doesn't stop the baby from crying, does it? No, we just can't hear it or it's not as loud. That is what our medical system has taught us. Find a symptom, throw a pill on it. If that doesn't work, bypass it or take it out. Big food and big pharma have turned our healthcare system into a sickness industry where they're literally banking on us living longer, but sicker and dependent on what they have to offer. That, my friends, is a sickening truth and is exactly why I started this podcast. I am on a mission to help you unlearn what you've been taught and get to the truth about what is really making you sick. It's time to break the cycle and take control of your health. Thanks so much for listening to the Sickening Truth Podcast, my friend. Please subscribe, leave a review, and tell a friend. I'll be back next Tuesday, and I hope you will be too. Till next time.